I'm drinking yet another single cut beer I've never had before. I keep trying them even though there aren't too many single cut IPAs that I would highly recommend that I really like a lot. And my cat's ruining the take again, playing with a toy that he never plays with. And now he's leaving the room. Or not. Bad fur. Bad. Bad. Bad fur. Well, he just came in here and batted at one of his toys and made noise, and now he's just standing here. Hi, I'm drinking a single cup beer that is brand new to me called Tell Shaky and Boxcar Joe. Double dry hopped double IPA. And this one only exists in a double dry hop version. There's yeah, none, no regular single dry hop version that they make. It's, at least to my knowledge. Um, and it's uh, only American hops in here. They say new varietal Pacific Northwest hop, so maybe it's got like, I don't know, El Dorado or something in there, some hop that I feel like I haven't had in a single cup beer. And they say Pilsner and Pale Malts. Yeah, they switch up the malts they use often, like in uh, their really popular Softly Spoken Magic Spells, double IPA. That one they use English malts. This one is 9%, it's the strongest beer, or strongest double IPA I think Single Cup makes. And it was canned on the 19th of September. So that makes it, I think, exactly two weeks old. 9% is a little strong for my tastes, but I've had a lot of good strong, hazy, juicy IPAs lately. This one doesn't look ultra murky and hazy. I can see through it, but see, maybe I can stir it up a little bit in there and get some more yeast. Just, oh yeah, that, quite a bit, there's some on the bottom. It looks very pale though. I think the Pilsner malts they use have lightened it up considerably because I feel like a lot of single cut beers aren't really 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 pale and glowing like honey golden like this one is and single cut always has a beautiful head on top of their beers always rich thick bubbles with soapiness and everything happening that smells like it's 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 strong and malty but it smells really good <sighs> yeah it's not the, that soapy dank quality that i get from single cut all the time. This one's got lots of really ripe fruits happening. Mmm. And some melon and some strawberry hard candy type thing, Jolly Ranchers. Mmm. I like that aroma a lot. And it does seem a little bit stronger than some single cuts. It is double dry hopped. Yeah, it's like a medley of fruit punch aromas. Maybe not quite cherry, but it, there seems to be berry flavors like strawberry and melon. That smells good. It actually doesn't smell boozy yet, but I mean, it's really cold. I haven't even tasted it yet. Maybe just a tinge of some greenness in there. And it has a little bit of that vanilla cakey, almost uh, coconut sort of thing I get from a lot of any IPAs. Yeah, that's a very nice aroma. Mm. Not as full body and harsh as I thought it was gonna be. Still really fruity, just a little bit sweet. Not much burn. Pretty mild bitterness, and I like the aftertaste. It doesn't have that, that soapy, like kind of savory, unpleasant quality that I get from a lot of single cuts. Maybe it's the double dry hopping and also them using some hop varieties they don't usually do. Um, yeah, it's, 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 I was not expecting to like this so much. I could have bought more cans of this one. Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of a dank quality in there for sure. Yeah, it's got, it's got some scallion, but it's not overwhelming. I would say it's not unpleasant.
the body's a, a little bit soft, but it could be a little bit fuller, especially at 9%. And now I'm getting that slight soapy quality, but it's still really, really fruit forward. It tastes, yeah, it's peachy, apricot, lots of stone fruit happening. Sweeter, candy-like citrus, you know, Jolly Rancher type thing. Yeah, and it's some dankness on the nose, but then it doesn't it doesn't get all like piney or menthol-y on the tongue. Yeah, noticing a little boost that now, but the bitterness still seems pretty mild. It does dry out my tongue, but it isn't getting unpleasant and like kind of hard to drink or anything. I'm betting once this gets, if this, you know, takes a while to drink it, it'll, once it's warm or flat, it'll probably be unpleasant, but just like most double IPAs. I wish it had a little bit of a fluffier body. It, it, it could. It's also, you know, not, it's still not really, really hazy. I feel like there's been some single cuts that are, or had a little bit more body, they're a little thicker. Um, but this one is very pleasant. Oh yeah, once you can get your nose down in there and, it's warm, and it warms up, there's, there's some dank qualities. And it's grapefruity, but not too pithy. This is a really nice beer. Yeah, the only, I mean, I can't say anything really negative about it. I don't mind the dankness. I think it's a good amount. The The body is not huge and massive. Um, like I've had plenty of New England IPAs, double IPAs that seem to have a bigger body. They were lower alcohol, um, but it's not syrupy. That's not a super thin body. And it makes it all a lot. It, it, all, it all makes it more drinkable than your just about any other nine percent IP I've had. That's really nice. <clears throat> I would give this, you know, over a four, maybe four two five, probably four two five. It's uh, this is why I keep drinking single cut. It's because I, I never know when I'm going to get one beer that I really really enjoyed. There kind of flagship double IPA. What was that? That was the full stack, Billy Full Stack. It wasn't a huge fan, but this one is 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 very nice. I would I would definitely recommend this one for anyone who wants a big hot bomb dank, you know, multifaceted in your face double IPA. Um but it has the softness on the edges like New England style IPAs. It's not as soft and fluffy on the palate, unfortunately. Um, I mean, there's a chance there is some more sediment down here that would make it a little bit, give it a little bit more texture, but it, oftentimes it doesn't even have to do necessarily with there being that much, you know, s junk in the glass. It mostly has to do with how they brew it and, uh, and the malts and all that, all that stuff. Um, but this is a fantastic beer. And it's it's worth the money, even though some of these single cup beers are expensive. This is very good and definitely a potent, intense experience.